Chapter 4. Fasting Fevers and Fish Biscuits. We're getting through this book now. So, you remember the white dove and the voice when Jesus got dunked in the river? Well, the Holy Spirit stays with Jesus and told him to go hang out in the desert for a while. But don't worry, he didn't start wearing camel coats and eating insects. He actually didn't eat anything at all for a whole 40 days. My tummy's rumbling just thinking about it. Must be lunchtime soon. Did you know people sometimes choose not to eat anything as a way of helping them pray? They call it fasting. And you should always check with the doctor before you try it. But most people normally start with just skipping one meal, not 40 days worth. I'm not really sure what Jesus did for nearly six weeks out there in the desert. But I do know this. He wasn't alone. Jesus constantly had to deal with the devil. The devil was trying to tempt Jesus to do the wrong thing. He promised him rewards if, if, if he did as he asked. But Jesus was strong, not to mention clever. Every time the devil tempted Jesus to do something wrong, Jesus used the Bible to defend himself. Jesus knew that the devil wouldn't be able to win if he used God's word as a protection. Eventually the devil went away and left Jesus alone. He thought there might be a better time to come back after. Who is the devil? Everyone thinks he's a little red guy with horns and a pointy tail, but actually the devil used to be an angel, just like the ones we heard about early in the story. When the devil was an angel, he turned against God and said, I'm not listening to you. With his fingers in his ears and his tongue stuck out, I expect. So God had to chuck him out of heaven. And that's when he became the devil. Lots of people are quite scared of the devil because they think he has lots of power. And they might be right, but I know that Jesus is always more powerful. Go Jesus. By the time Jesus got back home, everyone was already talking about him. He was seriously hot gossip. One Saturday in Nazareth, Jesus went to the synagogue. Yes, I did say Saturday and I did say synagogue because Jewish people go do their church type thing, which is called a synagogue, on a Saturday. He read a bit of Isaiah's story. You remember him from before. I am chosen. I am chosen. God's spirit is on me and I'm going to do awesome, awesome things. I've got so much good news to share. I can't really hold on to it. I've been sent to free the prisoners, make blind people see, make ill people well and so much more. And it's all going to start now. Right now everyone stared at Jesus they didn't quite know what to say he was saying some pretty amazing things even if some of them sounded almost scary he was the best teacher they'd heard in a long time and he wasn't even a tiny bit boring wow the weirdest thing was even though Jesus was reading some of Isaiah's story he made it sound like he was talking about himself but how could he be Isaiah wrote that stuff hundreds of years ago. Jesus knew people were a bit freaked out by what he said. So just to make sure they'd really got it, he said, those words I just read, they're going to come true right now. People couldn't stop talking about Jesus. They told their friends and families about him. He's saying some pretty outrageous things. I mean, he's just Joe's carpenter's son, right? Why does he think he's going to make blind people see? That's crazy. Or maybe, just maybe, he might. Well then, if things he'd said weren't weird enough already, he said no one ever likes the people who bring them God's message, especially when they do it in their town. In fact, in the past, God's messengers reached out to people who didn't even follow him because those who did just weren't bothered. Jesus was really pushing it here and everyone listening was quickly went to freaked out to extra angry. So angry, in fact, that they grabbed Jesus and kicked him out of Nazareth. Then they chased him like a swarm of angry wasps right to the edge of a cliff. They were getting ready to throw him off the top when suddenly they couldn't find him. They accused each other of hiding him. They pulled each other's beards to make sure. He wasn't hiding in disguise, but he was nowhere to be found. He really had just disappeared. 
The crowd wandered off back to the town, feeling even angrier than before, and now they had sore beards. Well, eh, grr. Jesus didn't go back to Nazareth that day. I mean, would you? If you thought someone was going to sling you off a cliff? No, thank you. Except he went to the place called Copernicum, which is pronounced Copernicum, where people actually wanted to listen to what he was saying. In fact, while he was there, the things he'd said back in Nazareth really started to happen. There was a guy who had an evil spirit living in him and Jesus just chucked it out. Simple as that. The people were absolutely amazed. Evil spirit? Spooky. Well, not really. In the same way that God wants to send his Holy Spirit to come and live in us, to do good stuff, sometimes, or not too often, bad spirits get there first. But even if they manage it, Jesus always has the power to kick them out, just like he did in the story. How did he do that? What kind of guy is this? I heard he was a carpenter's son. That Joe guy who made wonky tables. But this seems way more interesting than that to me. Pretty soon, everyone knew about Jesus for miles around. He just kept on doing more and more amazing things. In fact, people actually started to expect him to do amazing things all the time. Even after a busy day of being awesome. When Jesus turned up at his friend Simon's house, he had another job to do. Simon's mother-in-law was really sick, so Jesus ordered her fever to go away, which it did. And then she cooked them some dinner. Even after he'd eaten his dinner, Simon's mother-in-law was an epic cook. Fish in fish sauce with fish biscuits, nom. People just kept on coming, so Jesus healed them from all sorts of illnesses. He got rid of more evil spirits and people kept on coming. So he kept being awesome all evening. Tiring work. In the morning, Jesus was proper worn out. He was so tired that his face looked like he'd been hit with a saucepan. So he decided to take a walk before everyone else was up. But even then, there were people waiting for him. So they followed him everywhere. They just wouldn't leave him alone. They wanted more and more and more of his awesomeness. Eventually, Jesus said, I know you want me to stay, but if I do that, then other people in other towns won't get to hear how great God is, will they? And that's why I came to do these awesome things so that people really can see how amazing God is. Finally, the people let him go and Jesus spread his awesomeness all over the place. Well, all over Judah anyway. So there's a map of Judah. We've got Copernicum up here, Nazareth here. And Bethlehem, which is where he was born, over here. And that's today's chapter. And we're back with chapter 5 on Monday. <laughs>